I do have American favorite steam engines because of my great country that I live in, and I'll reveal those in a later question. What has been your best moment since joining social media? The best moment for me since joining social media would have to be the many friends that I've met and became close with to this day. From when I first started to now, I have gained such amazing and wonderful lifelong companions. I mean, like I said before, I'm really shy and I do have friends in real life and friends online. But to be honest, I was really shy and I didn't know if they would like me or not. But ever since joining social media, I've made such wonderful lifelong friends and companions that I just I just don't see them. <laughs> I I do see them as friends, but I see them more as just friends. My friends are like my second family. I have a family at home and I have a family in my friends. So the best moment for me joining social media is the many friends that I've made. Are there any particular railroads slash railways you've been waiting to visit? If so, then what? In terms of railroads I would love to visit, I would love to visit the Great Smoky Mountain Railroad, the Bluebell Railway, the Strasburg Railroad, the Tennessee Valley Railroad Museum, the Conway Scenic Railroad in Canada, and the Tally Flynn Railway in Rails. Which model brand do you find is better, Bachman or Lionel? Honestly, I do like both Bachman and Lionel, and they do make great products, but I'm gonna side with Lionel. They just make the best. Johnny Kubrika asks, How did you use Railworks for your videos? Oh boy, this is going to be a little hard to explain, but I think I can make it work. Well, the first thing I usually do is, I usually get an idea for a video. I usually do that when I'm out walking or when I'm watching a YouTube video. Then when I have inspiration for a video that I want to do, I type out the rough draft of what I want to make inside Notepad. And because I'm not a really good speller at times, I usually transfer it to a text documentary program to properly uh, spell out the words and add more just in case I run out of room. Then I send out the lines to voice actors so they can record their lines at their pleasurely leisure. And then once I get all the files, I start creating. For pictures, I just use MS Paint. I know, quite a shocker, right? But hey, you know what they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And MS Paint has been a great reliable drawing uh, pad to use along with a piece of software that uh, my friend uh, train lover 844 extra productions introduced me to paint.net a photoshop like program that i've been uh, using ever since he introduced me to it and while i'm doing that i do all this on my regular computer when i need to film train footage i jump on over to my uh, gaming computer fire up Railwork, and then I set up the train and scene that I want to use. Then I start up a program called Fraps. It's a video game recording software that records the gaming footage. And then I bring all those clips and audio files and sound effects into my movie making program. Which, for making videos, when I first started, I used Windows Movie Maker. It wasn't the best, but it certainly wasn't the worst. After using it for a while, I just stopped using it because I was bored of it and I just didn't have an interest in making videos anymore. But then in 2010, when I started my freshman year in high school, I learned that there was a video making class that I wanted to try. And after trying it for a few days, my interest in making videos popped back up. Then in 2013, my grandma bought me a copy of Pinnacle Studios 12, which I've used it until October of 2018 when it started glitching out and when my camera's 
video footage was starting to act all glitchy and such. I'm pretty sure you guys remember that from my uh, rail fanning videos picture where it had that big black frame around it. And so around that time, I decided it was time for a replacement, and I've since upgraded to my current video making program, which is Sony Movie Studios Platinum 13.0. Think of it as the cheaper alternative to uh, Sony Vegas. And once I edit all those videos in, I press the Movie Maker, and, and it makes into one incredible video. When did you first join YouTube? I joined YouTube on October 18th, 2015. Jacob Western RR11 asks, When did you first see 2101? How did you get to know about the locomotive? I first heard about Ridding T1 2101 in the Southern Pacific film by Greg Show Video Productions, SP4449, The Daylight. In that particular video, it discussed the 4449's history and how it was restored for the American Freedom Train to celebrate our nation's 200th birthday in grand fashion with Reading T1 number 2101 and Texas and Pacific 2104 number 610. I later learned more about it in uh, the Mark 1 video, Ross Rowland, Giant of Steam, and he uh, discussed how he came across Reading T1 number 2101 and what a great locomotive it was and uh, it just amazed me at uh, how much he really loved the locomotive. And then of course down the road I got the video the 2101 story which went into full detail of how the locomotive was built, how it ran, and how it was restored for the American Freedom Train and run on the Chessy Safety Express. And I gotta say it was a very beautiful locomotive and it still is to this day. And it and thanks to that, the Reading became one of my favorite railroads, and 2101 became one of my favorite Eastern steam locomotives. And of course, like everybody, I was sad when I heard that the locomotive got damaged in a roundhouse fire and is currently on display, uh, fading away due to the uh, elements and such. I don't mind it painted as American Freedom Train number one, but still, the fact that this engine was left to deteriorate really really makes me sad but who knows with enough time and money anything is possible who knows maybe one day 2101 may see a return to steam one day until then all we can do is just try and donate to her and her museum to try and keep her in tip-top good shape what are your future plans for a YouTube channel well um Okay, I do have plans for future videos, and I do have future plans for my YouTube channel, but that question I'm gonna leave kinda unanswered. Sorry, I don't mean to be rude, but the main reason why is because I don't like giving out any spoilers, and I have something I like to call speak now then forget later. Like, if I say something at the moment while I'm working on it, I might procrastinate and forget about it until later on. And sometimes I uh, often forget about it and I just don't put in the motivation or energy to do it. So that's why I usually don't try and time myself or set specific dates because it puts a lot of stress and pressure on what I do sometimes. So for the most part I need to focus on current stuff before I move on to future stuff. Love your videos and keep up the great work. Aw, oh, thank you. Andrew Ventorn, I probably mispronounced your name, I'm very sorry, asks, What do you think of the POR Q1 and Q2 duplexes? The Pennsylvania Q1 did have an interesting wheel arrangement and a very nice looking streamlined design, but in all honesty, it was a flawed design operational wise. The Pennsylvania Q2 was basically the Q1 done right because it showed that out of the duplex era, with enough time and effort, a duplex can be uh, constructed right and perform excellent. But it's a real shame that none of the Q2s were preserved, because I think one should have been preserved to at least show that some good came out from the uh, Pennsylvania duplex era. 
What is your favorite northern type steam locomotive class? Mine's the Niagara. My favorite northern type of engine would have to be the Baldwin Santa Fe type steam locomotives. In particular, the Santa Fe 2900 class. To me, those along with Baldwin steam engines had a very nice mix. They have the uh, physical and uh, powerful ability of a modern steam engine, but yet on the outside, they still retain a classic steam locomotive design. And that's what I like about the Santa Fe and Baldwin type 484 Northerns. What are your thoughts on the Chinese Railway QJ-2102s? I think the Chinese QJ-2102s were very interesting locomotives and very unique ones too. They certainly are very powerful, they're very beautifully designed, and they have a very interesting whistle sound. I am thankful that a good majority of them have been preserved. And the best part is, we have three over here in the States. Golden Ruklaga 6446 asks, Are you going to do more trains videos? I would love to, but the game lags like hay on my gaming computer, so I'm gonna have to say no. Is there anything else you like besides trains and MLP? Well, I also like photographing. Photographing is a very interesting and nice hobby. It gets me out and I see beautiful sights. I'm also a fan of monster trucks. Boy, do I love seeing those big machines fly and perform so well. I also like drawing. I draw both paper and on the computer. I'm not the best and I'm not great at it. But it's the fun of doing it that makes me want to uh, keep using. I'm also a gamer. I'm not a hardcore gamer. I would rank myself as a second gamer, just because I don't go full out gamer and such. I also like to go out and take walks and strolls. I also like to swim, and I like to try and work out a lot. Did you get tickets to see the UP Big Boy 4014 in action, and in particular for Union Pacific FEF3 844's 25th anniversary? Sadly, I didn't get any tickets, but I did get to see Big Boy 4014 and 844 for the 150th anniversary of the driving of the Golden Spike. Can you hopefully do Let's Plays on your channel or on a separate channel? Sorry, I have no interest in uh, doing Let's Plays or uh, stuff like that or make a separate gaming channel. The main reason is because Let's Plays and gaming channels tend to be a little cliche and just same old same old kind of like if you've seen one stone you've seen them all Berkshire 765 asks how was it starting off honestly starting off was a bit rough at first I was also going through a sadness phase and a depressed stage but thanks to my friends family and uh, fans who kept pushing me to go forward I felt the weight of the world lift off my back and since then I've been uh, I've been happy starting off my YouTube channel and look where it's gone today and the channel has become very successful what is your advice for small channels honestly there isn't much advice I could give other than what other youtubers have said however one advice I will say uh, when you're starting a YouTube channel is be yourself if you have an idea go for it don't worry about its quality or uh, how long it is just keep going and you'll get people visiting eventually and you'll get people to subscribe to you always start small if you plan something big it'll lead to stress but no matter what just be yourself do not take orders from anybody just be yourself be independent, make friends, and and always value the many subscribers you make, because some people don't see a lot of their subscribers to be important, but for me, my subscribers have always been important to me since day one. Train Lover 844 Productions Extras ask, What model train company is your personal favorite? I would say Athern Trains. If you had the choice to be an engineer of any steam locomotive besides UP3985, what would be your choice? Grand Trunk Western 6325. If you had the chance to travel anywhere in the United States, 
what would be the three places you want to travel to and why? Georgia, Minnesota, and Texas. I would like to go down to Georgia to meet my friend Tom Todd 774 I would like to go to Minnesota to see one of the few surviving Duluth, Mesabi, and Iron Range 2884 Yellowstones. And I would love to visit Texas because I would like to meet Walker himself. Hey Michael, I'm proud of you for reaching the big 500. Aw, oh, thank you very much. Willie Waters asks, what is your favorite Great Britain steam locomotive? My favorite British steam engine, hands down, has to be the LMS Duchesses. When you were younger, did you volunteer for a railroad? If so, what was the name of it? Sadly, I never really got to volunteer at a railroad. I did one time uh, try to volunteer at the Billy Jones Wildcat Railroad in uh, Los Gatos, California to but it didn't really work out, and I was crunched for time, so I had to uh, say no to it. What do you do when you're not recording a video? Do you go fishing? I sadly don't fish, but I usually like to take walks and hike around my local town and exercise and keep in good shape. What I do for my job when I'm working is I help install swimming pools and spas. It can be very hard work, but it's really good hard work. It's been a long time since I last did this, but I would love to go out and ride bicycles again. I once did ride bicycles, but the older I got, the more they seemed to fall apart. I hope to maybe get another one in the future, but for now, I just like walking. What steam engine do you want to see from the past? The S16446 or the Pennsylvania T1 5550 I'd much rather see Pennsylvania Railroad 5550. Roundhouse Warrior asks Southern Pacific 4449 or 4460? <sighs> I know a lot of people are going to hate me for saying this. Southern Pacific 4449. If you had to get any HO scale model, what would it be and why? I don't know if they made this one in HO scale yet. But I would love to get the Santa Fe 21010 for HO skill. Are you planning to see 4014 in action? Yes, I did. I did see Big Boy 4014 in action. And is Harry a wizard? Um. Yes. Harry is a wizard. Oakland Rail Fan 190, the uh, rail kid of Oklahoma, asks What railroad is in your area? Union Pacific. What happens if all railroads besides Union Pacific and Antrek are gone in the US and Canada? Then we would be back in the middle of the Stone Age and uh, the economy would crash. What railroad will you put on your HO layout? At the moment, I just put regular random railroads on board. It usually depends on what model, what railroad, and what locomotive type. Caltrain or Go Transit? Caltrain, hands down. Oh, hey Alex, how you doing? Uh, wait, I'm doing a Q&A. <clears throat> Oregon Western Railroad Productions asks, What do you think of Bob Bachman making the SC44 Charger? I'm honestly looking forward to uh, the Siemens Chargers coming to uh, HO scale. And honestly, i much rather go for the Pacific Surfliner variants. They just look more unique to me and and of the photos and videos I've seen, the Pacific Surfliner ones usually come out. Yes, I know there are ones on the uh, Amtrak Cascades and Midwestern. And in all honesty, the Amtrak Cascade looks great. But I do not like the Amtrak Midwestern paint. To me, it just looks like the uh, Siemens Demonstrator Scheme just patched over. And whether or not if it is or not, I don't know. But... I just think the Pacific Surfliner ones look much better, so I'm gonna go for that particular variant when it's made. If you had to see any locomotive besides 2101 or any UP steamer, which would you see? I would say Nickel Plate Road 765. Favorite Fallen Flag Railroad? The best Fallen Flag Railroad to me personally has to go to the Southern Pacific Railroad. Cool, congratulations. Thank you very much. 
BNM3713 Productions asks, Are you excited to see Boston and Maine 3713 return? Yes, I am. I'm looking forward to uh, 3713's return to Steam one day. What is your favorite New England railroad? Boston and Maine, Luton, Central Vermont, etc.? I never heard of the previous two railroads, so I'm gonna have to go with Boston and Maine. Do you think that someone should rebuild a Boston and Maine R1 class 2104 mountain type? I'm for any steam engine getting a new build, so if someone was doing a new build of that particular type of engine, yes, I'd say I'll be excited to run. Southern Pacific 74 Productions ask, What is your favorite steam locomotive? I do have one particular favorite steam engine, it's obviously the Challenger, but I also have uh, tons and tons of favorite steam engines that are number one in my heart. I really have a lot of favorite steam locomotives, and if I named them all, we would be here until Christmas 2025. So for now, I'll give you my top 20 favorite steam engines, 15 that are preserved, and 5 that I feel are distinct. So for my favorite steam locomotives, number one, Union Pacific 3985. Number two, Reading T1 number 2101. Number three, Southern Pacific 5021. Number four, Southern Railway 2716. Number five, Nickel Plate Road 765. Number six, Grand Trunk Western 6325. Number seven, Milwaukee Road 261. Number eight, Great Northern 2705. Number 9, Union Pacific Big Boy 4014. Number 10, Norfolk and Western Class J611. Number 11, New York Central Mohawk number 3001. Number 12, Pennsylvania K4 1361. Number 13, Frisco 1522. Number 14, Atlanta and West Point number 290. And finally, Southern Railway 4501. As for distinct favorite steam locomotives, Number one, the New York Central Hudson's. Number two, the Southern Pacific NT4 Mountains. Number three, the Santa Fe 4000 Class 282 Mikados. Number four, the uh, Reading I-10A Consolidations. And finally, number five, the Central Railroad of New Jersey uh, Double Cab Camelback 10 Wheelers. Southern Pacific or Western Pacific? Southern Pacific, hands down. Are you going to see Big Boy 4014 when it, it's in operation? Yes, I did go see Big Boy 4014 when it was in operation. Are you going to get more steam and diesel locomotives for your model railroad? Yes, of course. Model railroading has been fun, and honestly, model trains are like chips. You can't just eat one. Once you eat one, you gotta have more. <laughs> and our last set of questions comes from Redding Co. Productions. Do you prefer Train Simulator or Trains games? Both games are good, but I prefer Train Simulator. Why is Union Pacific your favorite railroad? Union Pacific is my favorite modern day railroad for quite a number of reasons. One, they got a very nice color scheme. It's always nice to see that bright banana yellow go by. And two, I really like the fact that they have our great nation's flag, uh, the Star Spangled Banner, as part of their uh, paint scheme. I mean, just when I see those colors go by, it makes me smile, knowing that we have a great patriotic railroad to look up to. And three, the engineers and crew are some of the nicest people you can meet. I remember a long time ago, I was out rail fanning when I saw some of the UP crew were feeling very tired when they came to my town to pick up some grain hoppers. <clears throat> so I went to my town's local market, bought some uh, water for them, and I gave it to them so that way they could have something to drink. Well, three days later, when I was out rail fanning, the train was coming up to a switch and the train stopped. And to my surprise, the conductor came down and he handed me a lantern and he said thank you very much for the water that just that just amazed me and it was so nice of them to give me that lantern and I still have it to this day and it also coincides when I saw the big boy the steam crew 
and the railroad men were some of the nicest people you could meet. Ever since those visits and uh, the occasional wave to the engineers, I've developed a great respect for Union Pacific. And plus, ever since I was a little kid, I dreamed of maybe one day joining the railroad, study as an engineer, become a locomotive engineer, and to one day become the locomotive engineer to Challenger 3985. That's a childhood dream that I'm still pursuing to this day. What is your favorite fallen flag railroad that is now Union Pacific owned? Mine's the Cotton Belt. My favorite fallen flag railroad that UP now owns is... I don't even need to say it. It's the Southern Pacific Railroad, hands down. And finally, what is your favorite vet slash heritage unit? In terms of my favorite heritage units, from Union Pacific, Western Pacific 1983. From Amtrak, Phase 2 Heritage Unit 130 from CSX, Chesapeake and Ohio 8434. For Norfolk Southern, if we're going by the ES-44s, Southern Railway 8099. If we're going by Aces, Wabash 1070. But if I had to pick one, it would have to be the Wabash Heritage Unit. As for my favorite Veterans Units, I will say this. Of the three Veterans Units Antrak has, I like ACS 64 number 642 the most. It just wears the paint scheme so well. CSX 1776 was a nice nod and a complete surprise to me. And honestly, it looks really nice. And I love how they paid homage to the uh, navy blue and yellow. Pretty nice touch there, boys. Kansas City Southern 4006, despite it looking like three engines in one, it's actually a very nice paint scheme and uh, it's a very good locomotive. Norfolk Southern 6909's paint scheme looks really nice. I love the banner ripple that they have and uh, the honoring veterans uh, ribbon on the side and honoring veterans and the US flag on the side. It's just an amazing veterans unit, especially for the E60s. And all these engines are good, but none of them compare to my all-time favorite, Union Pacific 1943. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying the other veteran units are bad or anything, far from it, they're not bad at all. It's just, 1943 holds more of a personal experience for me. It's got a great paint scheme, it's numbered for a year that America entered in World War II, and it was the first veteran unit that came out uh, before the others, and it started the trend for veterans locomotives. And plus, when it first came out, I started to appreciate what our veterans went through to, uh, keep uh, America as a peaceful country. In fact, I can say that for all veterans. And coming from a military family, my mom served in the Air Force, and just knowing that there was a locomotive out there uh, honoring her and all the other veterans from the uh, Army, Navy, and Air Force, 1943 was the first, and, and it's since hold a special place in my heart among veterans' locomotives. Well, that's all the questions. I sure hope everybody had a great time and enjoyed the video. I also enjoyed answering your questions you sent and making this video. It was hard work, but again, I enjoy hard work. Thank you all again for 500 subscribers. If you guys like to see more stuff I make, click this playlist. If you'd like to see more videos in future, Please subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell. Oh, sorry guys, I, I need to get going. My next train is due out. See you guys next time.